I'm Harry Rogers and this is Class of the Past, the only place to come for in-depth interviews with former Luton Town players. This time we spoke to goal scorer and all-round menace Danny Hilton, who spent six years with the Hatters and was a big part of the club's recent success. We discuss why the ex-forward is prone to picking up so many yellow and red cards, what Nathan Jones was like to play under and the reasons behind his Penenka penalty kick which became known as Danny's Dink. Hilton also described some of his most memorable moments in a Luton shirt and what it was like walking away from Kenworth Road at the end of his contract. He also told me about the incident that got him in huge trouble with both the gaffer and his wife. As always, thank you so much for the support and don't forget to follow Class of the Past on social media. Now, sit back and enjoy what Super Danny Hilton had to say. Welcome to Class of the Past. Thank you for, for finally chatting to me. It's been a long time coming, but it's, it's a pleasure to have you on. No, no, I appreciate um, you you inviting me on. Um, I've been really looking forward to it, actually. But like you say, yeah, it's been a long time coming, hasn't it? Uh, busy kind of <laughs> schedules and kids and activities and stuff has made it a little bit harder with it being a summer holiday and stuff. But now I'm delighted to finally be on now. Uh, I was when I was it's sort of researching uh, about your career and, and everything. Um, I was putting down all the questions and before I, I go sort of into a time of Luton and that, you must be the only player in Luton history to be sent off for throwing a litter picker. <laughs> like, yeah, so what, yeah. what, what, what's happened there? Tell, tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, it's probably a real proud moment for me, actually. No, I'm only joking. No, um, yeah, do you know what? Um, do you know, it was a real fun moment. Look, I, I say a fun moment. Listen, I don't condone it to any young people out there with aspirations of playing professional football I don't advise <laughs> you do that let's just clear that up firstly but um no it was um I remember playing and I, uh, who was it against I believe it was was it Doncaster or someone like that I believe yeah. and we, we was winning the game 3-1 and we, they were one of the better teams at the time um and yeah it was a uh, it was a moment that I, it's going to sound really weird but I felt like the Luton Town fans actually really took to me because I, I got sent off for doing something really silly just as they probably would was going to go on and learn you know i see the red mist and stuff like that happens and it was just i kind of dreaded it straight away because i thought i don't know what i've done and then um my name got sung from the fans and i was like wow like they're actually i thought i was going to get booed or something and it was like wow these are actually singing my name coming off after a red card it was one of their moments that kind of really opened my eyes i thought do you know what like I, I loved it like I thought that will do for me like I, I, of course I didn't want to make them moments uh <laughs> you know, I didn't want to make them a frequent occurrence but no it was one of them moments it was it was yeah it was a bit weird but yeah like I say I don't condone it but yeah again another you know moment in my Luton career that now that I'm not there now it's kind of one that you know it's not an unbelievably proud moment but it's something that you look back on and it's you know i, I suppose entertainment value i suppose so oh 100 yeah. percent. I, I was there that day and, it, and i was in the crowd and yeah definitely people around me were laughing as well um obviously you're, you're not a Luton now you, you've moved on but you were a huge part of that journey from league two up to now obviously the premier league um were you there at, at, at the Wembley final? Obviously, you weren't you weren't part of the team that day, but a lot of the players you played with kind of took the club that one step further. Um, were you there on the day, and, and did you hear from any of the boys afterwards? Of course. So, like, since I've left the club, I'm 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 not just saying it cringy as it may be. Like, I'm I'm a complete Luton Town fan now. Like, it's I'd rather go and watch Luton Town over Arsenal, Man United, City any day. Um, so that day was a it felt like I'd been promoted to the Premier League. It was, I still feel very much part of the club. Um, so I went to the game. I went with my friend and I went with my eldest son. Um, and we and I went with Glenn Ray as well. And so we we'll watched the game with Glenn. And um, we went to London. We got in early. Soaked up the atmosphere. Um, it was a brilliant, brilliant day out. We was in with the Luton Town fans and then watched the game. And of course, what happened happened. We we and I won the game, and uh, I went to the after party after. So I was in the hotel with um, <clears throat> the team and the and the staff and and start. And it was a really, really good evening. Um, but just like I say, yeah, I wasn't there as a player anymore. I was, but I still felt very much part of it. And I thank the club for allowing me to still, you know, be part of it and go into the the party after but it was an amazing day honestly my son my friend uh they, they had honestly he's a Tottenham fan my friend but he said after the game he's like I'm gonna be um my second team is certainly Luton so I've kind of bred a, uh, another Luton Town fan but yeah it was a, it was an unbelievable day for, for me 
Uh, what what was that atmosphere like in in the hotel? I bet it was just you know absolute mayhem in there. I mean, I've seen the the videos of Mick Alford in the change room afterwards with with his beer and jumping up and down. I bet it was just carnage, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It was like I say, I didn't see that bit, but I went into the yeah like the party after, and the lads were still in their kit. Uh, <laughs> they hadn't showered. Uh, they were just yeah, you know, enjoying themselves, their family, their their, their friends were in there. Uh, it was a real real good vibe, and you know, it just it couldn't happen to a better group of people because what they achieved on the pitch was outrageous you know getting promoted to Premier League's unbelievable um but they're a group of just wonderful human beings first and that's what I always say the best thing about that club about Luton Town is that top to bottom chairman to the, the chefs the the I don't know the ground staff or whoever's involved the club is just a, a like a brilliant brilliant person and um yeah, so for that reason alone, that's the biggest compliment I can pay. But for that reason alone, I was so happy for everyone involved with the club. Mm, yeah, it was an amazing day. And and how do you think we're, we're going to get on next season? A lot of people writing us off, but I mean, you know, being in and around it, you know what the team's like and that kind of never die attitude. It, you know, I, I've got a feeling we, we might do all right. I mean, naturally, I think everyone that comes up gets written off, don't they? Yeah. Um, I think Luton Town, they love getting written off, don't they? Uh, if, if, uh, I'd be worrying if people were saying that Luton Town are going to stay up. Then I'll start thinking, well, that's 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 not what we used to. So we love being written off. We love being an underdog. We love, uh, you know, causing an upset, don't we? And I've got no no reason to believe that we're not going to go into the Premier League. And I, I can guarantee before long, the team's going to find out how hard it is to, to go to Kenilworth Road. I remember going there as an opposition and it was... Like I hated it. I thought it was so hard to play in. The crowd was hostile. It was so intense. They were hard work and they pressed. They were in, like aggressive in the right way. And and I, I soon went on and learned that playing for Luton was was when you have that crowd and that atmosphere behind you is it it gives you superpowers. You know, it almost it, it does, and it, it just lifts you and raises your game. So. I think clubs are going to find it so hard to go there. And, um, yeah, I can't wait to see some of the big boys go there, you know, and and, and, and find out how, quite how hard it is. Yeah, I can't wait. Um, just quickly as well, um, when I put this out on social media that I was chatting to you, um, I, I got a great question from someone called Simon Williams who t said, if you had the deciding penalty uh, in the, the championship playoff no, final... Would, no, I already you, know you're going to say it. <laughs> No, I, do you know what? No, of course not. I, I don't know. I don't think I'd be brave enough to do that. Um, yeah. But no, yeah. Oh, yeah that, I'm just getting nervous thinking about it. But yeah. um, no, I wouldn't have. But um, especially <laughs> after that AFC Wimbledon one when he stood oh. there, I didn't. I, it, um, yeah, where, I got where, a bit of trouble for that. Yeah, where, where did the Penenka come from? You know, so I used to, when I when I knew that I was taking penalties, me and a couple of other players, we used to practice them on a Friday or or a Monday whenever we were playing, you know, day before the game. And because I used to just want to go into the game, like kind of, if I get a penalty tomorrow, this is where I'm going. And if I miss, it's not because I was indecisive or I was second guessing. It was just because the keeper went the right way and saved it. So I, I didn't I didn't like to go in with any, you know, um, uncertainty. I suppose. So we used to practice and then. One day it was, I don't know who it was. It might have been she and it might have been someone like that. But she's just kind of, you, you've got lovely left foot. And I think he just used to just kind of caress the ball down the middle. And he's like, keepers always move out of the way. The keeper's never going to stand. The only way a keeper loses on a penalty really is if he stands in the middle and the ball goes to the side of him. And he, he looks a little bit silly for not diving. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to I'm gonna try it. And I just lifted it and went in. And then I tried it two, three, four, five, six more times. And it, frankly, they were going in, you know, and they look a bit risky. But like I say, I, I never thought keepers were going to stand there. Um, so, but then, like I say, yeah, AFC Wimbledon, I probably should have known better because the goalkeeper coach, I, I used to play, he used to be a, a goalkeeper coach at a club that I played at previously. So I probably should have known that that they, they were going to know. But I tried it and he stood there. So that wasn't my proudest moment. I got a bit of trouble for that as well because... We were one new up in the game at the time and effectively that would have killed the game and Nathan went crazy at me. <laughs> and I just thought, oh no. And he was he just said to me, You better hope that these lot don't equalise. If you you better hope that we win next game. So thankfully we went on, we got the second goal anyway, we won the game. So it didn't cost us. But I suppose that's the risk of, you know, uh of doing it. But it wasn't ever in a flashy way or an arrogant way. It was kind of 
it was in a way where I just I just felt comfortable doing it, you know. And mm. thankfully, more often than not, it went in. Well, I, I remember the uh, the Blackpool playoff game. Obviously, I know it was a, a horrible <laughs> day in the end, but I remember the penalty you got when you, when you dinked it, and I was behind the goal that night, and it, it clipped the inside of the bar as it went in, and my heart went in my mouth. So to pull it off in in something like that, um, you know, you you got away with it more than more than often. Well, well, yeah. So do you know, I didn't think of it at the time, but of course, it was a playoff game and it was high risk and you know high pressure kind of thing and um thankfully you know i suppose my Luton career could have gone a completely different way so thankfully it did go in and um you know like you say on the day it wasn't it wasn't meant to be it was actually a really tough day actually because yeah losing that in them circumstances to mm, really mm. let go and stuff was was heartbreaking but you know it's that was meant to be and you know that was a a building block of what was then going to be a wonderful five or six years and you know a big part of the journey to, to go into the Premier League so thankfully it did happen because you know we were one year wiser one year better off to then go and you know bounce through the leagues as as, as they have. Mm. Well, well let's go back to, to 2016 when, when you signed uh, from Oxford um, what was it about the club that, that kind of drew you in I mean there, there's a lot of talk about um, obviously Nathan Jones the manager at the time a lot of talk about the presentation he used to give to players yeah. Uh, to kind of get them to get them on board with with the project, um, was that something you experienced from him, um, or just tell me about those initial conversations you had? Yeah, so f- initially I was at Oxford. I had a, a quite a successful time there. We'd just been promoted. The club offered me a new contract, um, and it was a it was a great change room. Um, so I, I never really thought to myself, right, do you know what, I, I want to leave here. But I just thought, let's see what's out there, kind of thing. As you as you do naturally, I suppose you kind of have a look. Um, and uh, then my agent, who's a friend with Nathan, said he, he took over at Luton a few months ago, really highly thought of, a good young coach, you should go and have a conversation. So I did. And I met him in a hotel and, like say, he put this presentation in front of me, laptop, um, went on with the meeting and, and just had these ideas of what he thought of me, um, my strengths, how, where he's going to improve me, where he can think, uh, where he can get the best out of me, how I can score more goals. And he just knew stuff about me and just the depth that he went into, just I was blown away with really. And like you say, he went on and done that with probably every player that he went on and signed. And it was just, it, it made me, it really opened my eyes to think the kind of diligence he had, like that he played and, and, and mm. the detail with his, um, that he'd gone into. So um, that was the initial thing. So I remember leaving the meeting and just uh, phoning my wife and being like, wow, this, um, I need to, I need to sign for him because he, he sold me a dream. He said that the club would go and be in, in the championship in five years' time, is what he said. And, you know, I think it was five years, mm. uh, that, or maybe sooner, actually, that, he, that we didn't, didn't go and get in the championship. And, you know, who would have believed that a few years after that had been the Premier League? You know, it's, mm. it's, it's some journey. But, yeah, certainly Nathan Jones was the, was the, the, the you know, the, the first part of the reason why I signed him. Yeah. What, what's he like behind closed doors? I mean... I- I felt sorry for him at Southampton because I felt like he, he didn't get a proper chance there. Yeah. Um, and it was obviously a massive step up, like loads more media attention on him. Um, what, what's he like uh, around the place and, and yeah, just around the, the, the dressing room and, and to work with? Um, so, he's not probably not too dissimilar to, to the Nathan that you know, you know, highly passionate, highly intense, um, knows exactly what he wants. Um loves every single player that plays for him, treats them like brilliantly well. I don't know anyone that would probably have a bad word to say about him. Um, um, when you're working and when you're doing sessions that are his sessions and his shape and his structure and the way that he wants you to play, then you need to be 100% focused and you have to do it and you have to buy into exactly what he wants. Um, and he's got a way, I, you know, this is... I haven't got the answer, but I don't know how, but he gets 100% buying from every single player. Um, and I think that's because he treats people correctly. He treats them how you'd want to be treated, like like human beings first, and, and he treats everyone the same. It doesn't matter if you're his top goal scorer or, you, you I don't know, you play one game a season or you, you he treats everybody the same and he expects the same regarding whether whether you're the, the top goal scorer or, or you're, I don't know, a young lad coming through, he expects everyone to train at a tempo and intensity and, you know, apply themselves correctly. And because of that, he's, he created a, 
a really successful team. And um, yeah, I, I, I've certainly got nothing but good words to say about Nathan um, in terms of his Stoke and his Southampton career. You know, it didn't go the way he would have wanted. But again, knowing Nathan as I do and we do, is he would have gone there and believed he would have changed the club around and and taken the club to the Premier League or kept Southampton in the Premier League. And, you know, I, I, didn't, I don't think he probably realised you'd have to ask Nathan, but actually probably how big of them, how big them jobs actually were. And I think there's probably a bigger, you know, probably bigger deep rooted problem than, than just a, mm-hmm. a change of manager. As, as we've seen over the last few years, you know, Stoke have, you know, there's been probably five or six, maybe more managers that have struggled to, to, to get them back to where they, they think they should be. And I, I mean that respectfully and, you know, so, um, yeah, I think uh, he probably didn't get enough time at both and it was tough jobs, but there's no doubt that Nathan's a, he's a top manager. Yeah, and, and he he was also um, the guy that brought in Johnny Mullins alongside you as well from Oxford. <laughs> uh, yeah, he, you're laughing. Um, I heard that you two were a bit of a nightmare <laughs> to deal with, uh, with yeah. around the changing room, uh, away days. Um, yeah, any kind of stories you're willing to share? Oh, you're testing my memory now, but the, the, the biggest thing was is that John's a big, big child, big man child, <laughs> probably a bigger child than me as well. So, um, yeah, I remember actually, I, I signed at Luton and um, and then I found out that like straight after, he Johnny Mullins ran me and he's like, oh, Nathan Jones had been on the phone, he said like he wants to bring me and I was delighted because I was nervous about coming to Luton because I thought I didn't know anybody and... And it just makes it an easier transition, I suppose, if you go in with your mate. So when I was, I was like, oh, it's unbelievable. You need to sign. And kind of, he ended up signing and I was really happy because he's a top, top guy, Johnny. Um, and he's a good leader, a good pro. So it was going to add some like, uh, good experience for us, I suppose. And yeah, um, we were roomies and we, we, we stayed in the same room together. And, you know, you get up to craziness when you're bored <laughs> in the hotel, running around and I don't know, putting ice cubes in my bed the night before a game and stuff. I don't know if I should be saying this, but yeah, and silliness. <laughs> so I go to get in bed at night and my bed's wet through and stuff, you know, silly games and then knock down ginger and filling buckets up. I won't, I won't go into too much. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah just silliness really. Um, oh, but yeah, he was well, a great guy, a great pro. And, you know, uh, again, uh, a part of the, the, the recent yeah. Luton town success and, you know, um, yeah. That, and, and he can be proud of that. Mm. I mean, obviously, I think when you're on the pitch, that silliness went. But you, you mentioned the red mist as well. Um, you, you, you're really good at being like the wind up merchant. I think if I was an opposite, if I was a Luton fan and I saw you like an, as an away player, you'd really wind me up in the stand. But do you, do you kind of feed off that when you're on the pitch? Like, what, what is it about that role that that villain, I guess, that that you love? Yeah. So do you know what? Again, like if so, me off the pitch, I'm I, I can't I'm. I mean, it's again nice. I'm just a boring dad off the pitch. There's nothing <laughs> like, like I'm. Yeah, I'm just. I'm not really that rock and roll at all, actually. Uh, but I suppose on the pitch was. I, I, I suppose the only way I can describe it is I was probably never good enough to turn up on the day, and just play a game of football. You know, you get them players that are just wonderfully, I don't know, technically gifted or or just talented, and they just could. They're, they're a Rolls Royce. I don't know. I, I, um, I needed to be on the edge and I'm on the edge of boiling over to be at my best. And I needed to be running around. I don't know. You could be like winding up opposition and I needed that, that physical or, or I don't know, verbal battle with players to, to be at my best. And it was always in good jest. Of course, there were times when, you know, probably it it got a little bit silly or it boiled over and it went into yellow cards or every now and then a red card or something, but I needed to be at that boiling point to be my best and and when I was there you know Nathan used to say it to me all the time he used to say like I need you there but you can't let it boil over and and I believe that my most successful years the best years I had at Luton was was when I was right on that edge and you know like I said it was it probably I, I found a way of getting the best out of myself and Nathan found a better way of getting the best out of me and 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 it was there like I say unfortunately a few times it you know it resulted in you know me with an early shower or whatever but um yeah yeah but you know i, I couldn't i didn't know any other way and I, I didn't know I, it was the only way i knew 
But I think that's what the Luton fans loved about you, though, was because you played on the edge and because you, you know, you did things that maybe others wouldn't wouldn't dare to do on a football pitch. I mean, that first full season you had at Luton, um, uh, I think you were top goal scorer. Um, I think we got to the EFL Trophy semi final that year, um, and I think it was the playoff year as well. Yeah, yeah. Blackpool. So you know, a really successful year for you. Um, what what kind of clicked into place for you that year? Because you, you know, you were scoring goals for fun. Yeah, um, yeah, it's a tough question, but probably I went in and I went in and, like I said, Nathan spoke to me initially in that meeting about how he how he was going to use me and how he saw me. But I went in and Nathan's a a brilliant coach, so straight away he was his coaching was was brilliant, not just with me but with lots of players. You see the amount of players that actually progress and improve under him, and and he actually took pride in it. Actually, he used to say that if you're part of his team and you're playing for Luton Town under him, he can't promise you're going to play every game. He can't promise that you're going to, you know, go on and play in the Premier League or whatever. But what he can promise is that when you leave Luton or you leave him, you're going to be a better player. And because he, he did care about every single player. No one got neglected. So it's probably one of the, the first times in my career that he, he actually, I, I understood my role fully and he used me in a way and I wasn't getting in, involved in plays much deeper on the pitch and he used to say you're gonna have less touches but you're gonna have more quality of touches higher up the pitch and ultimately ended up with me getting more chances and more goals and you know he gave me my most successful years of in terms of goal scoring and and and, and the level that I played at so listen I'm I'm incredibly grateful to Nathan for doing that but yeah just it probably would just stem down to like good coaching good man management and you know I was fortunate enough to play in a, for a wonderful club with wonderful group of players that you know sometimes i didn't even have to do much you know when you've got i don't know jj or, or or jack stacy or i don't know you know andrew shinney giving you a tap in you know you yeah. you've got to be there you know luke berry i remember nicking goals off luke berry they were going in anyway i just used to have to try and get in the way and, and tap them in so uh yeah so I, I don't like to take credit or anything you know it was just i was lucky to be part of a wonderful wonderful team I think that the following season, obviously James Collins coming in as well, you two formed like an unbelievable partnership up front. And that was what ultimately led to, to you know, consecutive promotions, League Two, League One and so on. Um, and it was also that that second season in League Two um, that there were the, the big wins. So, you know, you're 7-1 against Stevenage, 7-0 um, against Cambridge. We, you know, we're just putting teams to bed in that in that division. Yeah. Um, I, also, I also wrote down the, the knee slide in front of the goalie. <laughs> yeah, in the, in the seven nil, another moment. <laughs> what happened there? Another moment. Yeah, one that got me in trouble actually with my wife, with my and 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 the Nathan really because it was it was just it it was a, it was a it was a moment. We just won the game. We won the game. I can't the pitch, and it was just a a moment of like, what are you doing? Like, what what are you doing? Why did you do it? And I remember getting in the car and being like. I don't know. I, I haven't got the answer. It's just, I don't know. It's like, I don't know. It's, it, it's like, it's not me. It's an out of body experience. I just do stuff. It's a bit crazy, you know, I don't know. Um, but yeah, you know, I'm glad I, I got to provide a bit of entertainment there. I did, I did get a nasty kick on my a leg because the goalkeeper actually picked me as I slid into him and, you know, probably deservedly so. So I can't really moan too much, but yeah, playing with, James Collins and people like that in the second season was was great and you know he was probably he'll probably tell you the same he was probably really really good for me Carlo because we were good friends you know I still speak to Carlo now um, but at the time I had come off the, the back of a quite a successful season where I was top goal scorer and all of a sudden James Collins comes in and you know he scores goals Carlo is a brilliant goal scorer certainly He's, he had always scored goals at a level, so I knew that he was coming in to, you know, rival my place as, you know, the main man as strikers like to be, you know, as egotistical as that may probably sound, you know. Um, every striker wants to be the, the main man. So, But we pushed each other every single day, so I knew that if I missed penalties, Collar was going to be on him, and if I didn't want Collar to score more goals than me, like, he didn't want to score, I he didn't want me to score more goals than him, you know, so it just ended up being quite a, a brilliant partnership, and we didn't, we was never in, in terms of it wasn't like we hated each other. Or we tried to kick each other in training or anything. It was it was just a you know a partnership that was I really enjoyed playing with him because he was quite similar to me. You know, physical, put himself about, loved the battle. But you know, we both wanted to be 
the top goal scorer. So it was we, we pushed each other every single day. And it, mm. you know, like you say, it turned out to be a wonderful, successful season, didn't I it? Mean, yeah, I mean, by early December, um, I think Luton were the highest scoring team in the country. I mean, you, you two were just putting them away for fun. Um, you know, being compared to the likes of Man City in the Premier League, you're getting more goals. I mean, it must be an unbelievable achievement at that time. Yeah, I tell you, I, I do remember actually. We played who you you tell me. We, we played was it Yeovil on the first game of the season? We, we did, yeah. seven seven nil or seven two or whatever it is. And yeah, I was suspended. Yeah. I was suspended for the game because I got sent off at um, someone. The see, it might have been not counting someone the season before or something. Um, and I remember sitting in the crowd. Colo's first game, he scores a hat trick, and I was. I was so happy that we'd won the game. It was brilliant. And I just felt ill because I was I couldn't help think that <laughs> if I was playing, I would have scored like you know as you do as a football yeah. thing, I would have scored a hat trick today. That was me. And I remember Nathan coming up to me after the game and he was like, he could see I was happy but a bit gutted and he was like, Let that be a lesson, kind of don't do silly things to get sent off. But trust me, you're gonna come back in the team and you will score goals because you could see it, it kinda of hurt me, but you know, I was delighted, like I say, I can't Again, I mean that in the nicest possible way. I loved my partnership with Colo, and like you say, it was it was successful. And we scored lots of goals, so yeah, being compared to them big teams was amazing. But yeah, it was like I say, it, it, we kind of drove each other on, you know. Mm, and, and that season as well was the uh, the FA Cup game um, away at Newcastle. Um, and you know, you you probably should have had two goals that day. Um, one was chalked off, um, but. But again, what an experience it must have been to to kind of go to somewhere like St James's Park, and I think there's about eight thousand, seven thousand Luton fans as well there that day. So yeah, it must have been a, a really great day for you. Yeah, it was one of my favourite games actually. You know, we we lost the game three one, but I think apart from probably about what was it a ten minute spell where they scored three goals, you know, I thought we we gave a really good account of ourselves, and you know, they fielded a very strong team that day, and like like you say, we had a disallowed goal that from other angles that I've seen since you know it looked like it was onside and Elliot Lee come on and hit the crossbar we had one or two other chances and you know what one or two of the goals they scored was quite soft and you know on a different day it could have been a different result but I thought we gave a really good account of ourselves and yeah a game that I really enjoyed and the fans that they were unbelievable they say seven eight thousand of them were, were they were so loud so so proud and it was you know I'm glad that we scored a goal to give them something to cheer about um mm a wonderful stadium as well Newcastle was a massive stadium and it was packed and yeah it was a brilliant experience you know we did lose but it would be nice to go on and win but no it was, a, it was a great day well it wasn't a great day but it was a great experience you know sure and I mean it was the following year in, in League One we went right through um record-breaking season yeah um, 28 matches unbeaten for, for me personally apart from obviously go, going up through the playoffs uh, last season that was probably my most memorable Luton season because not only was I watching uh, the team do so well, but I was working, well, uh, volunteering with, with Stu in, in the press team there. So, you know, I, I was writing the, the match reports and I, I, I don't think I ever wrote a report where we lost. Like, I was helping. Oh, yeah. It was yeah. unbelievable. I mean, you had like Jack Stacey and JJ, like you said earlier. It, I think it was also special as well because um, obviously Nathan left for Stoke that year. Yeah. Um, and Mick Harford came in, took over and we got the job done. Um, what, what's he like around the place and, and what kind of influence did he have on you at, at that time as well? Uh, yeah, you don't need me to tell you kind of what yeah. kind of guy Mick is, you know, you, you you would have met him and you everyone knows Mick's a legend. Mick, Mick can, he's the biggest legend, you know, and again, he's, he's had a wonderful career, he had a wonderful, been a wonderful servant to Luton, but just an unbelievable guy, you know, like big friendly giant, uh, you know, you hear these stories about he was, you know, no one mess with Big Mick, did they? Like, they're terrified of him. But he's a, honestly, he's a teddy bear. And I mean that in the nicest possible way. He's a, just a, a lovely guy. Um, so it was when he when when he took over, you know, he he didn't have to change much. It was like we knew exactly. I, I touched back on Nathan. We knew exactly what was expected of us. We played a diamond, and everyone knew exactly their roles in a diamond. And, and it was just like you say that year in League One. I think that diamond just got probably as strong as it could get it was just rotations and everyone knew how to play so when he left Mick yeah he was a brilliant kind of head figure for us but we had players like McCormack, Sheehan, Sonny, uh, Polo, um, I don't know, Shinny, Berry, all these people that just managed the team and when you have people like Shees, Maka, Sonny, that they're, they're the wonderful guys but real authoritative you know and they, they didn't need to rant and rave and scream and shout but they just kept it 
where it needed to be and it, it was like a well-oiled machine that ran itself and that's probably the only way I can describe it and it just mm. kept doing it you know we kept ticking games going into a game winning going into a game winning or drawing not losing and you know momentum in football is a, a wonderful thing isn't it and when you've got that and you've got a, you know you're on a good run you've got the players and the squad that we had and you've got big Mick there and stuff like that you you know it's a recipe for for success isn't it as a team were you worried when Nathan left because I mean we're I think back to, um, you know, the, the Portsmouth game. And I think looking back, that was kind of the game where where everyone thought, OK, we, we're probably going to go on and, and do it this season. Um, w- was there a bit of concern when he went? Or I know he, you know, Nick came in and just kind of stared at the ship and there were a lot of carrots in there. But but were there any concerns that when you first saw the news that he had gone? Um, I think and I think initially when, when a manager leaves in football, it's uh, for the right reason as well, because we were we were doing well. Um, he was doing well. Um, it does make you think, oh no, are we going to be able to kind of carry this on? And then you're thinking, who's going to come in? Are they going to like me? Is it? Are they going to change it? Are, what are they going to do? So it, it's quite uh, it's quite natural to have them thoughts. But like I say, everyone had a brilliant relationship with Nathan, so everyone was gutted he left. Uh, I know at the time it didn't get perceived very well and and the fans weren't very happy for for the reasons that they have and i think they've been you know put to bed and the relationship is okay now or or good now but um yeah it was it was we were gutted to see him go because we had a great great relationship with him but for the reason i just touched on we knew that mick was going to come in we knew the team we we knew the what was expected of us we knew our week we had people like jared simon i don't know everyone involved with the club we knew what was expected of us and like I say just a, a, a team that knew what to do and how to do it and I mean again I mean this respectfully nothing much changed when Nathan left yeah we lost our you know our manager we lost someone that we we, we loved like and cared for but you know, when you're doing that well it was always going to happen you know Nathan was mm. always going to get poached at some point and um, yeah, it was. But like I say, the biggest compliment I can pay to the club and the team and and to him is that when he left, nothing much changed because he had done such a good job. Mm. And we obviously went on, got the job done, up to the championship. Um, how how big was that step? Was it a shock when you when you first went up? I mean, I think back. I feel like if if James, Justin, and maybe Jack Stacey would have stayed for another season, we played that that way. It might have been a different story. I mean, different manager. Obviously, Grand Jones comes in as well. Um, yeah, how, how big was that that step uh, in that first season? I mean, we just just about survived. It, we, we, it's a big step. It's probably League Two to League One, uh, 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 a step, but. Like I say, I, I I always thought that even in League Two we were a championship team. You know, I, I I thought that I thought we had players that were playing way below where they should be. And that's a credit to the club and the recruitment and you know manager and everyone involved. Um, so when we got to League One, you know, we could we could manage and we like this, like you've touched on. We went and got promoted at the first time of asking, and then when we went to the championship, that was it was the biggest step. Then you noticed right the, the quality of player, the, the the size of stadium, the atmosphere, um, the intensity of the games were went up a level again. And you know we were quite capable. We we played at an intensity anyway, but it was just every single game you needed to be at it. And I just think the you know the individual brilliance in that league. You've got players that can hurt you in an instant you know um so that was probably it and yeah we struggled the first season um it, it, you know graham jones came in and it you know it wasn't as successful as maybe it hoped it would be um but he was a brilliant coach and you know you don't need me to tell you about graham jones's cv you know he's he's been a wonderful he's had a wonderful career so uh yeah sometimes it just doesn't happen in football you know but then the story again probably it's just a part of the Luton Town story that, you know, Nathan comes back after being, you know, leaving on bad terms, comes over. And, I, and I've said it before, I don't believe anyone in 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 the world could have come back in and, and kept us up that year, except for Nathan. He just knew the club and he knew the players and, you know, I don't know, got a reaction, fine, that was COVID at the time, but just got a reaction from the fans, um, even though they couldn't attend games, you know, kind of, um, it just it just brought everyone back together and, and it, like I say, he managed to, to to do, you know, the unthinkable and we stayed up and thankfully we did because, it, again, it's, it's gone on to be a part of the, this wonderful journey that Luton Town have been on. And and that, you touched on it there, that, that Blackburn game, which the last game of the season, must win. Yeah, um, yeah. A completely different 
kind of ball game compared to where Luton have been before, you know, always looking up and then suddenly looking yeah. down. I mean, how, how how would you prepare for something like that mentally? Yeah, good question. Um, I, the, the, the only way I could probably describe it is that the, the, the group of players that you have at Luton and through League Two to League One, it was predominantly pretty much the same core of group group of players and they're never they're not phased we were never phased you know we'd win a game 7-0 and you turn up on Monday and it would be we were we were there every 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 day we, we never got too high never too low so yeah we found ourselves in a relegation battle but it was never panic stations um it might sound quite weird to hear that but it was we were kind of we just believed in ourselves we we, we kind of believed we'd get out of it again yeah, don't get me wrong that game was touchy and it was nervy you know I think we went a goal down didn't we mm-hmm. and then we and there was a couple of own goals in the game and stuff like that, but it was, um, you know, I'm, I'm I'm so thankful in the end we stayed up. Um, I mean, I think we won the game three two, didn't we? Three two, three, yeah. I don't think we we didn't even need to win in the end, did we? No, no, we didn't. Uh, but we didn't know that at the time, <laughs> no, that, did we? And yeah, but it was um, no, it was a, it was a, yeah, it was a, yeah for the wrong reasons, you know, staying up. But it was yeah, it was a, it was a great day and. I remember the DJ and a few drinks on the pitch after the game and stuff like that. So it's again another another good moment in 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 the recent history. And um, yeah, again, although it's for staying up, it was a, it was a day that you know we at the time that's where we were, and and it was an achievement to stay in the championship that year, wasn't it? That's what we would have set out to do, and we 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 achieved what we set out to do. How weird is it to play in an empty stadium? Yeah, it was weird. It was really yeah. weird. You can hear every shout from the manager every shout from the players and it's kind of like a reserve game you know you play a reserve game or a training game you can hear every shout from the player every shout from the manager sometimes not good as well because he's probably shouting <laughs> at you sometimes as well um and, and although and sometimes when you give the ball away and he's shouting at you and you can hear you can just pretend you can't hear him because of the crowd or whatever you, you can't just pretend so uh yeah no no it was it was a bit weird but that that, that was football at the time and the world was going through mm. A pandemic and and all of this that you know, I don't even think we quite understand now what really was going on. But uh, that was football at the time. And again, I, I actually think it. We went to places like Ellen Road and and got a draw with Leeds and and you know we we drew again one one and I think if that was a a packed Ellen Road in front of forty thousand, you know it, it might have been different. Who knows? Um, so maybe it, it, it played into our hands and you know. The, the the position we found ourselves in, we we end up playing games against teams at mid table in the championship, and maybe they weren't quite as motivated because there was no fans there and stuff like that. So who knows? I don't know. Maybe maybe it helped us to stay in the league that year. But you know, I certainly wouldn't change anything that happened because you know it's 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 led on to to this wonderful journey. Mm. And and like you say, you keep touching on the journey, and and it was exactly that. And from there, just keep going up, up, up um and you know as i said before you, you played your part in that um is there a, a moment that stands out for you um while while in the championship whether it's that first season or, or it's the last that, that sticks out for you as um you know a, a really proud moment for you i mean you you played a lot of your football sort of in the in the lower sort of league one league two division so to, to kind of you know affirm yourself i guess uh, as a championship striker it must be must be great um a particular moment, and so I really enjoyed the the, the goal at Derby because I come off the bench and I think we won the game one nil, and I come on and scored. I, I believe it was one nil, um, and it was my first championship goal at Kenilworth Road, and it was something I, I wanted to do because I'd gone through rubbish injury times. I won't get my tiny little violin out and start playing it, but yeah, you know, it's part of football, and but I had tough injury times and knee injuries and issues that I I, I found it really tough to get back. So. I was delighted that I come back, and you know, I ended up getting a few goals in the championship and contributed in in any way I could. You know, I always gave my all, always gave my best. Um, and yeah, maybe that derby one because it was at home. It was, you know, I just felt like I wanted it. I felt like the crowd wanted it. And you know, again, it was a wonderful moment. And yeah, a moment that helped us, you know, get into the playoffs that year. And mm-hmm. yeah, it was probably maybe maybe that one. But that's me being selfish, I suppose, saying my goal at derby. But there were so many highlights of Luton you know the promotions the just just turning up every day and being part of 
that squad was was a highlight. You know, I I don't ever take that for granted at all. And you know, it was it, it, my whole six years there were, was a highlight. Honestly, it's, I I couldn't choose. I could, I really even the Premier League one when they got promoted to Premier League. I wasn't even a Luton Town player, but I'll probably still say that's my highlight of the Luton Town journey because <laughs> I honestly I, I I loved that day. It was it was wicked, man. It was wicked. I got nothing but unbelievable memories of of that club. Mm. And and you nearly, I mean, uh, like you say, you, you you were happy that that they got there in the end, and you, you nearly did it yourself as, as a Luton player at Huddersfield. Um, and and I think actually on that second leg, I think we were the better team when you look back. I mean, we had a couple of injuries. We were you know we were we were kind of running on empty, yeah, and we yeah. still did a really good game. Um, and and it must have been gutting. Uh, I mean, I know we did it, and you weren't there, but I, I suppose at the time gutting that that we couldn't get to that final. Yeah, it was, you know, like you say, we did have a few injuries. I remember our, our biggest one that I can remember at the time was probably Eli. He'd done his hamstring and he was, you know, he's a massive player for us, Eli. A big like, focal point, a big strong boy, athletic. The, the way that we played, he scored goals for us. And, you know, so he was a big myth for us. Uh, but I, 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 I agree with you completely. I think that second leg, we were the better team. We, we, we'd worked out kind of how Huddersfield play. And we, we kind of worked out how to stop them. Uh, with our shape, I remember doing a lot of work on their shape actually, um, and I remember we having a few chances in that game, especially the first half. I remember Corny having that one where it's flashed across and he's got good contact on it, but he's probably about four or five yards out and it goes straight to the keeper. Um, a couple of headers that were just flipped on, but we didn't get a second touch on corners, and it was, you know, on another day we could have found ourselves two or three up, and you know, heading into a playoff final. And, but you know, again, I don't want to keep repeating myself. It was heartbreaking day. I bloody cried my eyes out two times. I've cried in the football pitch that day, and you know, Blackpool playoff, and it, it might sound cringy, but it's heartbreaking because you put so much of your time and your effort and your care, and it's your life, you know. And to come so close and it to end, and it was a, a bit of uncertainty for me because I didn't know if that was the end of my, you know, my journey with Luton or not. And uh, so it was, it was, it was a tough day for for the club and for myself. But you know, again, it's not about me. It's not about any individual. It's a, like another moment that we went through as a club, and you know, we grew and we got better from, and we learnt from, and and it's ultimately it's ended with us being in the Premier League. You know, mm, and how hard was it to to walk away after? Uh, all that time you you had at the club, obviously moving on to a different team. Yeah, um, honestly, that part like I've been lucky enough in my life to not lose anyone close to me or or anything like that. But honestly, the, one of the hardest like, and this might seem out of like you know, I might you might think I'm bigging it up too much, but one of the hardest days, honestly, periods of my life, it was I I couldn't look online. I couldn't go into the club to say goodbye to anyone. I couldn't. I couldn't read a message. I couldn't look at my WhatsApp or a text message. It was just honestly, it was it was so hard for me. Just because the the time that I had there it was it was so good, and the friends that I had there, and the bond I had with people, it, it was so hard. It was so hard. Um, so it wasn't probably for about four or five days that I could actually look at my phone or look at Twitter, or then go into the club and see like the media staff and film something but even then i couldn't i couldn't even film the video that i wanted to film just because i just i was like gonna cry my eyes out like a big baby i was so <laughs> it was so hard it was so hard but listen again it's not about me or, or any individual you know the, the football moves fast and i'm extremely proud of the the, the journey that i had at luton but you, you got to keep moving forward you know and my time was was up there and you know they they, they went on sign colton morris and you know the best thing they've they've gone and done and the, the partnership with Eli and Colton you know I played with Colton a few years back when he was at Oxford and I knew how good Colton was and we played against him in the championship that season he scored a wonderful goal against him. so listen it, it happened and you know I'm even I'm thankful it happened because they've gone and got promoted to the Premier League of course I would have loved to be part of that but again that was part of the journey and that was part of the club moving forward to achieve what they, they've gone on to do so no hard feelings at all um just just a, a, like an overwhelming of like i don't know appreciation for for, for having me for that long mm. and, and what's next for you um you know at northampton at the moment i know you've just had surgery as well yeah so i don't think i'm speaking out of term when i say this i hope i'm not because i don't mean it anyway but leaving like i say because leaving luton was so hard i don't think i've fully adjusted to leaving i, I found it really because luton was my life and i bought into luton and it was my 
big part of my kids' lives, my wife's life. It was, it's been hard for me to to go and leave and now be a Northampton player, you know, because it's hard to feel that attachment that I felt with Luton, you know. So it, it, I, again, I, I think I said it the other day. I don't, I don't know if I've fully got over that, you know. And that might sound a bit like I'm being a bit pathetic or something, but you know, I'm. I think to get the best out of myself, I need to be one hundred percent in like you know and and feel and you know so it's been tough for me um the struggle and you know i'm 34 years old now so you know injuries and and stuff it, it that doesn't mean i never give my all for northampton I, every time i go on the pitch I, I try and give my all but i've been struggling with a knee injury and i end up having another one you know my fourth one on the same knee so it's not ideal but again i'm not going to play that tiny violin i mentioned you know it's, it's it's part of being a footballer and it's part of you know getting old isn't it um so <laughs> Listen, I'm 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 really enjoying my time at Northampton. I'm really, I'm, I'm delighted that we achieved promotion last year. Uh, last year, because they were so close the year before. You know, they missed out on a goal or, or whatever it was, which must have been. I I can't even believe how hard that must have been to take. Um, you know, winning three nil or three one on the last day, and Bristol Rovers, I believe, winning seven nil or something. It must have been bizarre. But you know, they went on got promoted last year and you know I was happy to contribute in any way I can whether that just be a wise old head for the younger strikers you know or trying to keep you know I don't know trying to be part of the discipline or even just being a, a fun person around the place you know lift them around and stuff mm. it's it, it, for me it was to try and contribute in any way so I'm, I'm delighted that, that the club got promoted and yeah we're, we're looking forward to another successful season this year whether again whether I'm starting or not I'm, I'm going to try and contribute in any way I can that's great. And and one day, obviously, much you've got plenty of time yet, but one day in the future, could you see yourself as a coach or a manager? Well, um, so naturally, as you get older, you start to think of that transition period, don't you? And um, so I've started doing my coaching badges. And again, I won't keep mentioning Luton Town, Luton Town, but they've been wonderful with me. They, they've allowed me to complete my UFB licence, aspiration to go and do my UEFA A licence. Uh, the club, I'm, I have actually spent last year coaching with the under-11s um, in the evenings, two or three times a week. Um, my son's actually, my, my eight-year-old's just signed for Luton Academy now. So he's, you know, uh, the new, the new in with the new youngsters now at Luton Town Academy. So that's quite a proud moment for me because, you know, I, I love seeing him run around in the Luton Town shirt now. So then it gives me a reason to keep going back in as well. <laughs> um, but no, I'm still coaching there now this season. So I'll be with the, like the 11s and 12s and doing little bits with the strikers and stuff. So, like I say, the club's been wonderful with me, and you know, who knows what could happen in the future. I'd love to be back at the club. I'd love to be back involved. Um, but yeah, I'm just thankful that they allow me to to learn and and try and you know start that next journey of my career. A future, a future number nine, a mini Hilton. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's he's um, a bit more technical than me. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. Um, Danny, it's been it's been a pleasure to to talk to you. Um, I close the interviews with the same question. Um, so, if I was to put your picture in a big scrapbook of Luton players, um, what do you hope it would say about you, and what do you think you personally brought the club? Oh, um, what would it say about me? I'm hoping it would say someone who one gave 100 percent every single day, every single time I went onto the foot pitch, um, felt loved by the club and loved the club as much back, you know. Um, um, and was you know it was a small part of you know the, the some massive recent success you know, um, and the other question was was oh, oh what, what do you I, think I, you brought the club? Yeah, well, if nothing else, you know, entertainment value, um, <laughs> you know, whether I played good, bad, you know, uh, you know, there there was always something you know around the corner that even if it wasn't a goal you got to celebrate, it was some sort of silly moment that you enjoyed but got me in trouble by my wife so listen even <laughs> if it was good for you yeah um yeah that's, that's brilliant yeah. that's brilliant the place to leave it thank you so much for your time dan no no thank you for having me I'm, I'm i'm glad that we finally got this done and yeah no i've really enjoyed it <laughs>